Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul. Rooted Cosmic Soul is rooted in releasing the tie that binds. T-I-E stands for transmuting the eye. The eye is in the self and the eye as in your mind's eye. If this is your first episode, welcome. If you're returning for another episode, hey, what's up? Welcome back, my friend. For those who don't know yet, my name is Deidre and I am a storyteller, a channeler, a transmuter. Currently, I understand my purpose to be to live my authentic self and therefore walk two interlocking paths, making for one divinely guided and ever evolving journey. One path is to remind people, especially those that look like me, that they are loved and they are worthy. And you are loved and you are worthy, even if you don't look like me. This is through sharing my growing knowledge about how to understand your eye energy. And on this channel thus far, it's been me sharing chakra and aura energy care ideas and processes, as well as transmuting the eye, unbinding the current construct and timeline via engaging the concept of transmuting oppression, suppression, and control. The second path is to take channeled messages and share them via a storytelling format. If that sounds like something you're interested in, check out the Rooted Cosmic Soul story time videos that are on this channel. You'll find that there. Both of these paths offer those who are ready the opportunity to release the tie that binds. This here is a transmuting the eye episode. Today I'm going to share with you some ideas to consider regarding what many people call shadow work. But before we get there, if you've been watching my videos, you know I like to start out with defining transmuting the eye so we can be as much on the same page as possible across a video platform in which I likely don't know you and you don't know me. So transmuting the I is the practice of changing, altering, and lifting the veil on the external and internal exertion of oppression, suppression, and control on your 3D experience. You then release your energy from it and engage in a 5D perception and reality. If this idea of 5D perception and reality is foreign to you or you don't really get it, just think of it more in terms of when you lift that veil on the internal and external exertion of oppression, suppression, and control, that allows you to be, find, engage your more true and authentic divine self. And that's, for me, that's the goal. And in doing that work, I found so much joy, which is why I want to share it with y'all. With that out of the way, shadow who, shadow what? <laughs> Let's dig into transmuting and quote unquote shadow work. When it comes to wanting to change the world and specifically thinking about things like racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, ageism, elitism, languageism, is that a word? There's probably a term for it, but you know that, um, that English only movement crap. Right. There are many ideas you can choose from when you start thinking about wanting to change the world or and uh, how to change the world from these isms and obias. Here at this channel, we transmute. We transmute oppression, suppression, and control. There's many ways to transmute oppression, suppression, and control. We like to think of it in terms of transmuting white supremacy and patriarchy. And that comes from an actual process and way an offering to help folks, particularly folks who are working in teams and nonprofits, for profits that care, ways to work with each other that confront, don't sidestep the isms and the obias. And there's a, you know, I'll put in the description, there's an online course available to folks. My business partner and I do consulting for groups in that area. And so I'll put that there. That tends to be, it's a little bit more, you know, intellectual. It was designed to help people who intellectualize the work of confronting racism, sexism, homophobia. It, it was designed for a business, corporate, nonprofit arena. 
The other way is the transmuting the eye, where you are here now. The main difference between this and transmuting white supremacy and patriarchy is that on this side of things, we're very, very, very explicit about the spirit side of things, the spiritual aspect of this work, how to engage your chakras and energy work and channeling tarot, oracle, breath work to transmute. When it comes to the shadow, there's no one way to engage the shadow either. And there's no one definition in this timeline about the concept of shadow work. What I suggest is that you consider finding what works for your particular view and your growth. I'm going to talk about here how I think about shadow work and how it, how I think about the shadow journey and how it connects to this idea of transmuting oppression, suppression, and control. I'm sharing my understanding and what has significantly supporting my releasing of the inauthentic ways of being housed in parts of me, often housed quite deep in my subconscious and behind strongly walled, hidden, indoctrinated beliefs. Now, transmuting and the shadow have a lot to do with perceptions and perspectives. So consider that uh, a perception of life on earth right now could be one of times of growing unrest, of a demand for justice, a call to return to a, what I call a fictional time, right? So in the United States, there's a lot of people like, let's go back. We need to go back. We need to go back to true values and make America great again. And, uh, you know, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was, it was great. It was great. Oh, Okay. When you didn't look like me, that's when it was great. Uh, anyway, a perception of life on earth right now could be one of shifting timelines, of awakening awareness, of ascending souls. A perception of life on earth right now could be one of a calling back to remembering and regarding. This planet is not only our true only home for the air, water, fire, and land our embodiment needs, and that also our relationship to earth is a reflection to our relationship to ourselves and therefore our relationship to each other and all living beings and energy here. These perceptions of reality vary, creating multiple realities and perspectives present at all times, moving and mixing in every breath we each inhale and exhale. Each perception always returns to an individual eye moving in a world of eyes on earth. And I believe earth is waiting for us to see certain truths that dwell right under our individual noses. All of your perceptions, actions, beliefs, thoughts, emotions originate from your lone eye. And yet the current global world order pushes each of us away from the eye of us. It's much easier to control the masses when the masses have no idea of the connection between all of our eyes. And one of the reasons we don't fully understand our connections to each other in the we is because we don't fully understand who our individual I is. Transmuting the I seeks to make space and offer considerations for imagining, creating, and fostering a relationship with yourself in the material world and yourself in your inner, often secret world. Transmuting is essentially by choice, choosing to take on an inward journey, a commitment to exploring the deepest parts of your I, your true I. Transmuting is the peeling back of the lies the construct has told you about who you are, who, who you need to be, who you have to be. Transmuting is making friends with, building trust with, and understanding the parts of you created to protect you, to help the lost, truest, golden parts of you stay safe. The parts that know divine love, worthiness, choice, free will, delight in diversity, learning in contrast, growth from knowing truth, and joy in living with true passion, not consumption for consumption's sake or fear-based consumption to create energy for another to consume. This is where we find a wonderful connection to this idea of our shadow. And we lead into this idea of shadow work as it's called in this timeline. 
Before I share how I engage and explore the journey of my shadow, it's really important for me to slow down enough to make some connections as to why I believe many are either fearful of shadow work or akin it to the last thing in the world they ever want to consider or even believe in. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to get a bit simplistic because this is a general discussion that is offered as an exploration journey and not a dictated destination. If what you're hearing here really intrigues you and you want to go more deeply into it in a personal way, reach out. It's the work that I do, right? So you can book one-on-one time and we can talk more about transmuting oppression, suppression, and control from the eye. Back to what I want to talk about that's going to be sound a bit simplistic, but I think you're going to get the, you're going to get it. I hope you're going to get it. Who knows? In a timeline that has told us light is good and dark is bad, the parts of us that are untransmuted may jump to the assumption shadow is dark, so shadow is bad. You have a shadow, so you are bad. If you are bad, you are not worthy of love, of time, of grace, of compassion. If you prove your worthiness, if you buy and show your value, if you produce and make yourself useful, and if you consume and in consumption, you prove your worth, you will find what it is you're looking for in this lifetime. This is really how a traumatized being, most humans on the planet Earth right now, engages the self. This is the plan for oppressive, suppressive, and controlling forces. They want you to jump to conclusions and stay in a hamster wheel mind trap. Now, when this path of consumption and attempting to prove your worth inevitably falls short, and we still don't want to look inside because the inside is dark and dark is bad, the inside is unknown and the unknown is feared, we turn to externalizing and seeking to control oppress and suppress others in the hidden hope that it will make us feel better. Transmuting the eye is to take a journey with your shadow, to go inward with grace and compassion for what is found, to hold and be gentle with the parts of ourselves we find deep in our beautiful and waiting deepest dwellings. And usually, They have been so oppressed, suppressed, and controlled. We don't necessarily always find things we like. So learning to love them, ourselves, without condition becomes really important. It includes these parts, right, that we know are harmful to the self and to others. So transmuting means doing the work to seek personal accountability, to make amends, to create boundaries, to release what is not working, to find that your eye is worthy simply because. And since that's transmuting, it's closely connected to this idea of being in relationship to one's shadow. One consideration for beginning a transmuting the eye shadow journey. Seek via introspection, self-awareness, transparency, and vulnerability with the self. The parts of yourself that are controlling, defining, deciding your relationship and understanding with time and urgency, being and perfection, people and paternalism, storytelling and the written word, competition and cooperation, transparency and subterfuge, making assumptions and being curious, power with others and power over others. Now, I could go on, but I'm not. It just, the, hopefully this gives you an idea, right? These are the ways, among others, like I said, I could go on, that this construct is oppressive, suppressive, and controls what you think, see, believe, and feel. Transmuting is about getting into what does your authentic self feel, think, see, believe, 
And often one needs to take a shadow journey to get there. The shadow journey is about calling in the parts of ourselves, making the decision on how we are being and what we are doing. Transmuting the journey means using the arts and ideas grounded in compassion, grace, empathy, and love with what and who we find within ourselves. The journey is full of learning what works and what doesn't work, right? Exploring this moves us into and toward our true selves, our individual I, and allows us the space and knowing what and how our truest selves want to be and do in the we of the world. Not with the controlling, oppressive, and suppressive forces designed to make your I believe. Usually that you are a widget designed to consume and constantly prove yourself. Transmuting seeks to utilize a balanced sense of doing, yang energy, and being, yin energy, to explore and find the authentic self, which is the divine eye, with an intention to do less harm to oneself and to others. The journey to explore and expose one's authentic self requires an inward shadow journey, a commitment and dedication by choice to peel back the bullshit that is forced and offered to us in this construct to define and believe who and what we are. This construct has humans believe the work of creating less harm begins externally by telling everyone else who they are, while the lips speaking such lies often, if not usually, likely, always, (laughs) know very little to nothing about who they themselves are. One way to see the shadow journey is as an amazing learning expedition that begins internally, the digging into the self with great compassion and grace to know the divine self, to know why your eye chooses the choices you do, why your eye makes the decisions you make, why your eye moves and believes the way you do. Transmuting the eye during an explicit shadow journey foray or in relationship to your we is done through grounding in the arts of introspection, self-awareness, vulnerability, transparency, intersectional inquiry, and invoking collectivism. When I say in relationship to your we, the we to consider is family, work, community groups, neighborhood, church, partners, animals, planet. As we ground, meaning do and be in these concepts, we engage support mechanisms such as letting go of judgment as a tool, mindful breathing, slowing down, speaking from the eye mindfully, examining power and privilege present in the space you are in, seeking to understand how systems of oppression, suppression, and control are present, not if. And really important here is being honest when your eye is complicit in said oppression, suppression, and control. This complicity is not limited to white folks, rich folks, men folk, Christian folk, straight folk, cis folk. Do you see what I'm saying here? If you don't see what I'm saying here, go back 10 seconds. (laughs) Listen to the list again. So yes, the system definitely creates a reality in which these folks are given privilege and power. And all of our eyes have been contaminated and indoctrinated by the multi-millennia and stealth nature of oppression, suppression, and control tactics. Now, for this video, you're not going to be able to see me for various reasons. You're just going to be able to hear me. Understand, I'm not letting folks with non-targeted identities, folks with extreme privilege, off the hook by any means. They got some serious work to do, 100%. My experience is is at the end of harm from white folks, rich folks, men folk, Christian folk, straight folk, (laughs) right? But I have privilege in cis because I'm a cis woman. You can't see me, but I wanted to make sure that's understood there, that I'm not not talking out of my ass and I'm not not letting... uh, I do believe in accountability and responsibility for all of us in different ways. But know that if you do identify in a way that you're assuming you have no power and privilege, you might be true, but explore it, right? Explore it to see 
uh, is that the case? And also we're talking about intersectionality in our uh, reality. We have layered identities and, you know, that's why taking a shadow journey is so important because transmuting the process allows us to truly be honest with what we find and Sometimes we find privilege in places we didn't necessarily want to admit that we got privilege. Okay. Okay. So including your shadow in your journey in this lifetime means exploring and engaging these ideas and concepts, focusing on your eye. It is essentially what some will call shadow work. You know, others call it parts work. I've also would consider psychosynthesis to be shadow work. In my experience, that's what it is. But again, you can look up these things. You can look up parts work. You can look up psychosynthesis and see if that is of interest to you. And there are different folks. I don't offer that work, but there are really talented folks in the world that will offer you support in that area. The main difference in how I think about a shadow journey versus shadow work is that for me, work makes it seem, ugh, and why? (laughs) Like, even just work, I don't even want to work anymore. I want to do things that are my passion, you know, that that feed my passion, that feed my purpose, that keep me on the journey to be authentic to my eye and to my commitment to being part of the reason the world gets better. Shadow journey is the combining of transmuting the I concepts when engaging your shadow. You ground these interactions in grace, compassion, and love because the shadow is you. It's not some part to hate, to throw away. The behavior or belief is what we want to change. And it's the finding out what this part wants or wanted. And that is why this part created the belief, the mechanism, the way of being, the the wall. I found it tremendously helpful to see my shadow as the deepest parts of me. They're not outside of me. These parts are always, though sometimes definitely needing reining in, simply seeking to protect me, which I find endearing. (laughs) You want to protect me, little old me? Beautiful. But, you know, we got to have some agreement on what that looks like. Okay, so I found it tremendously helpful to think of my shadow parts as my truest BFF, right? Who I give the benefit of the doubt over and over and over. In this, my ability to see these shadowy parts and call them in has shifted me in ways that years of demonizing or demoralizing these parts did not. Since much of my trauma and therefore limiting beliefs, fear-based being, and unhelpful protection walls occurred and began in my infant to teen years, I have found it tremendously helpful to use parts work methodology. I mentioned it before. Go ahead and look it up. And I see my shadow sometimes as like baby Deidre. Sergeant Deidre, Sentry Deidre, right? And when I started engaging these parts in my energy work, so when in meditation, chakra and aura care, portaling and spirit work, everything changed. Not overnight, but it didn't take decades. So I know this is already a lot to digest, so I'm gonna close with this. Explicit ideas to consider. In transmuting the eye while engaging your shadow journey, see your shadow parts as beautiful pieces that puzzled themselves out and in. Throughout your varied trauma-informed experiences, wanting to protect your multifaceted eye. In transmuting the eye while engaging your shadow journey, see shadow work with yourself as a gift, a way to be in conversation with the deepest parts of yourself sometimes in plain sight and also hiding in the darkest corners where the deepest healing might be needed. And by the darkest corners, I do not mean bad or evil or all the other ways this multi-millennia old overculture has tricked humans into believing what the dark is truly, into forgetting the dark is the necessary counterpart to light, a space and place where imagination, birth, beginning and becoming dwell. 
Remember what I said at the beginning, the notions of white and black, good and evil, right and wrong are being used every day, right under your pretty little nose to steal your magic and hide your path to your authentic, worthy, powerful self. And lastly, in transmuting the eye while engaging your shadow journey, consider exploring, learning, or deepening your engagement of your energy and chakra care, especially the four lower chakras, earth star, root, sacral, and solar plexus. This will significantly support imagining, holding, creating, and fostering a strong, clear self to harmonize and balance the deep work that true transmutation and alchemization of this timeline requires. I hope you found this viewpoint and these considerations helpful to your various life paths and your ultimate soul's journey. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.